Thank you, Dominic, for yes, filming that fantastic series for us. Um, there is a, a few follow-up questions considering the queue. If I am okay. a beginner, what kind of queue do I look for? Well, pretty standard. So if you're sort of five foot eight to six foot tall or more, 58 inches is the standard length, which is about 147, 148 centimetres. And you're looking for something, the tip size of my queue is about nine and a half millimetres. I wouldn't suggest if you're a beginner you go any lower than that. Ten millimetres or something like that is perfect for a club table. And you're looking for a queue that's quite solid. So when you bat it with your hand, if you hold it sort of three inches from the, the bottom of the butt, and just at arm's length, middle of the queue, just hit it with your hand. You don't want something that goes like this. Wobbling. You want it quite, yes, you want it quite solid because basically if you hit a shot with power, if you don't have a queue that's quite solid, the ball is almost hitting the queue because it will make the queue really go whippy and springy. Mm -hmm. So you want something that would dominate the ball using a bit of power. But so basically 58 inches long, 148 centimetres and something around about 9.75 millimetres to 10 millimetre ferrule size. This ferrule is made of brass, a lot of people are using titanium, but that's a ferrule and the ferrule size I'll go for is something close to 10 millimetres. Mm. I've been speaking to John that his queue is a bit shorter because he's not the tallest guy That's tall. right, yeah. And also, Su so Jiahui is using a pretty long queue. The ideal is, Tai, if, if you hold the, the back of the queue, say, two to three inches from the butt, and you make your bridge, you want your bridge hand, your thumb here, to the cue ball needs to be about 12 inches. So if I just go side on here, you're looking for sort of there to there. So if you have a cue that's too long, you'll end up with a bridge here. Mm and it's too long. A lot can go wrong from here to here when you're queuing. So something, something about 12 inches from here to here. This is your bridge hand, your thumb here, the back of your thumb is where the bridge is, where the queue rests. So that from there to there, about 30 centimetres. Um, so if I can't really find a local queue maker, I just go to a shop, if I go to a club, just to find whatever is there. And um, how do I decide which one is the best one for me? Find um, somebody that sells cues that has a snooker table to practice on. There are quite a few. You have Craftsman cues, if I can name drop. You have Craftsman cues in Leeds. You have Green Bay's cues up in Stockton on Tees. They have a snooker table and they have dozens and dozens of cues. And the people that work there are very professional people. They can advise you. They can find a cue that suits you. Of course, I mean, this, this cue here is made of ash. It's got a very pronounced grain. You can see it here. There are maple cues as well, such as the one that Stephen Hendry won all his world titles with. He's a maple. And it, it doesn't have such a visible grain. There's so much out there to choose from. So it's all a case of finding the cue that you like, the balance, the weight, everything about it. And you can hit the balls on the table and practice with it. And, hit, and it'll feel right. You'll know if it feels right. Well, you just mentioned maple, ash, what's mm. the major difference? I find that ash tends to be more forgiving than maple. For instance, it's hard to explain, but basically it's, it's simple mathematics. If I play this ball with left hand side, the cue ball will go out to the right. It's simple mathematics because the mass is on the opposite side to where I'm hitting it. So if I play right hand side, the ball goes to the left. With a maple cue, it tends to be a harder timber. So. For instance, this is nine and a half millimetres. For me to play shots well with side spin from different angles, from different areas of the table over distance, etc., I find that I need a slightly smaller tip size or ferrule size with a maple cue because it tends to throw the ball offline mm -hmm. a little bit more because it's a denser wood than ash, generally speaking. Uh, okay, I was talking to Xin Zihao, the other guy, and uh, was playing on table one. He's using a maple cue, not right. like the other guys. And uh, Su Jiahui this morning told me a very interesting story. The queue he had gets uh, him into the semifinals at the Crucible this year. Yeah. He had it for a year, but never used it. Uh, that was two years ago. Wow. He let it sit for a year. And uh, he decided, mm, I'm not playing well, so I'm going to change my queue. And he went for that one. And it took a while for him to get used to it. So how long do you decide if you are getting a new queue and play with what kind of... The minute you play with a cue, you know whether you like it or not, but there can be problems. For instance, if the tip size or the ferrule size is too big, you might play shots with side spin and miss the pot because it's pushing the ball. So all you need to do is adjust this ferrule size. Now I do a lot of woodworking. I've worked on a lot of players' cues, including Jimmy White's over the summer months. Um, 
I gave it a full refurb, but I can actually taper cues and alter the ferrule sizes. And then as a professional player, I'll play shots with side spin and I'll re reduce the ferrule size until it plays the way I want it to play. Because sometimes you pick a cue, you like the weight, you like the balance, you like the length, everything. But it might not quite play too, as well as you'd like. Sometimes it can be too thick in the shaft and it can push the ball, it can be too stiff for its own good sometimes. So there are a few little adjustments you can make. But when you try a cue, normally just holding the cue and, and queuing up with it, you get a sense of whether you like the weight, the balance, everything but it doesn't mean it's going to play well. You can mm. make these little adjustments. Mm. So roughly you need to play with um, for yeah. two or three weeks um, or longer? You can get used to a cue within one week if mm. you do, say, a couple of hours a day. No problem at all. Steve Maguire has actually played with cues for a couple of hours and played major matches with them and played well and won those matches because psychologically he's very strong. Mm. Once he played one match, I think he beat Sean Murphy in the World Championships, went home and picked up another cue and came back for the second round with that. That's, you know, that's, that's what you can do if you've got the right mindset. Well, you won the Shanghai Master with a new cue as well. I did. I, I played the qualifier with a different cue oh. um, that, was a, that was very heavy. It was about 19 and a quarter ounces, much mm. too heavy. I wanted 18 and a half, but it was a three-quarter maple cue and when you have a joint here and you have a solid piece of ebony, you never quite know how heavy that piece is. And then um, I had a cue made by John Paris, which arrived. I had it four days, started playing with it, and I thought, goodness, it plays exactly like my other cue, but it's lighter, and I felt better with it. Mm. Took it to Shanghai, yes, and you're right, I won it after having had the cue four days. So that's what's possible if you can find a cue that you like straight away. Mm. Well, fans might always ask the price range. Mm. For a decent cue, how much should I spend? If you go on online auction sites such as, uh, there I mentioned eBay, mm. there are some wonderful cues on there that people and collectors sell by some top brands. Um, a lot of great brands, uh, Thailand cue makers, Maximus and, and Phoenix, Master Q, Tom Praram. Uh, they're not always John Paris. They don't always need to be John Paris. He's, I mean, this is a Thailand made cue by Maximus. Uh, some of the best cues in the world are made there. And of course, you've got some Chinese brands as well, some wonderful Chinese brands as well. There's so many of them these days. But you need to spend something, in my opinion, at least three or four hundred pounds mm. um, for a basic cue. I mean, this is just basically ash, the shaft, and ebony for the butt. But you can have cues with a lot of different splices mm. and more decorative features. And once you have that, the price really goes up well, because it's a lot more work. One. Colourful. Uh, absolutely. You might be paying £1,500 for a cue like that because it's so ornamental. You pay a lot because it's a lot more work. You have four splices here, but sometimes you can have eight or even ten or twelve. And it really pushes the price of the cue up because it's a lot more work. But you don't need all that. It's just fancy. Uh, you can have a simple front splice like Ronnie O'Sullivan's cue. That's probably all you need for decorative purposes, really. But, I mean, a lot of the great players such as Jerd and... Um, and, and uh, John Higgins, myself, we just use a simple, plain Ash and Ebony cue. Sean Murphy's another one. That looks fine. So you don't need any ornamentation. It's a traditional, classic style cue, this. OK, finally, what do you do to make them last longer? Yes, care of a cue is important. Try not to leave it resting against a wall at an angle like that because mm. it can warp. There's pressure at this end. And only gentle pressure, but over a couple of days, it can just warp the cue. It's best to have a case, keep it flat in the case, and try not to lean the case up against the wall, leave the case flat. Um, try not to leave it in the boot of a car in the winter months when it's very, very cold. Massive temperature changes don't help the cue because basically these splices are glued on and any really cold temperatures can cause a problem and it can also cause a problem with the ferrule here because that's brass and it sits on wood. So sometimes you can feel the ferrule underneath because there's been movement with moisture and dampness in the very cold winter months. So, you know, every now and again, maybe six months, just put a little bit of linseed oil on the shaft of the cue just to feed and nourish the wood then wipe it off with a dry towel, leave it overnight and it'll be ready to play the next day. So what do you do over the summer vacation? I don't, well, I don't really practice in, in the summer, but I keep the cue in the case and I keep the case as vertical as I can. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I don't really see it for a couple of months and um, it's fine, it'll be fine in the cue case because this cue has a good finish on it anyway and it's safe as anything in a cue case. Okay, thank you, Dominic. We look forward to you coming back to China to play again. I will really look forward to coming back to China and uh, good luck with everybody with the choice of cue and with playing the game because it's a wonderful game.